What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Billy Built. I built this motor about two months ago. Well, it's been roughly about two months now. Hard to believe, right? Long story short, when I installed the cams in this motor, the cams are set such that they are four degrees advanced on the exhaust side. I may have that backwards. They may be retarded. Don't quote me on that. I don't remember off the top of my head. But anyways, when I first put the motor together, I put it all together at TDC. Well, after some brainstorming and talking to some other guys who have made serious power on these motors, I went ahead and skipped a tooth on the cam gears. Uh, I believe I advanced the exhaust gears and retarded the intake cam gears by one tooth. But that's not how I want to do things. The proper way of doing it would be to get adjustable cam gears, which I have since done. And also the factory cam trigger on this car is very unreliable. Especially once you start making upwards of six, seven, 800 horsepower. Uh, it's actually a 360 tooth wheel and it's basically just a disc that's inside of the cam angle sensor. Hi, it's Billy from the future. Uh, I just wanted to go over real quickly, a little bit more in detail on this guy. If you watch any of the Motive DVD videos, if you aren't familiar with the RB26, RB25 series motors, even any RB motor for that, for that fact, RBs use basically the exact same cam angle sensor as the VG30. There is essentially 360 little windows in a disc. It's almost, you can almost look at it like a floppy disc with holes in it. They basically run through a optical sensor that picks up those little holes. And because there's so many that once the belt starts to stretch and flex back and forth, as you make more power, it want, the belt wants to stretch more and more. Once it starts to flex so much, that signal gets very irregular. And it does this because what's actually happening is this sensor is bouncing ever so slightly back and forth, causing the optical sensor to pick up multiple windows within a fraction of a second of each other. If you guys look really closely, you can see all the little fine windows that are in this trigger disc. Um, not sure, there you go. So what it does is this here is an optical sensor. You, so you can think of it like a, a little laser or something that shines through the holes and it's picked up on the other side by a receiving sensor. Um, and long story short, you can see how fine those windows are in the sensor. And as it's moving, it, the belt's stretching and it's moving at such a high speed that every once in a while it'll get a little bit of rebound from the high tension in the spring, the valve springs and cams. So if you tell a motor, oh, I wanna run 15 degrees of timing at, you know, uh, 25, 30 pounds of boost, um, and you got your cam angle sensor doing this number, that's 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 not a good thing. Um, Cause then you got spark just happening whenever uh, this guy is telling it to, which is all willy nilly and you can't really have that. So essentially what this, crank and cam sync trigger is gonna do is obviously there's fewer teeth, there's fewer windows and you might think, oh, that's not as refined. Well, because we have it on the crank, it's actually telling us where the piston is, which is ultimately what we want. So because we have a trigger tooth with 12 teeth on it, it's gonna be telling us every single time a piston hits top dead center and bottom dead center, whether or not it's, a, it's an ignition event or not. And that is the purpose of the cam sync the cam sync is going to tell us when a piston is actually at top dead center and when it is firing um, and the computer can do the rest from there that's just a little tidbit a little bit of insight they say on the rb26s that they recommend doing these even at like three four hundred horsepower because ultimately this is this can destroy a motor with like four or five hundred horsepower on it um, will this work can you make good power on this yes is it safe to do not necessarily, and that's exactly why, because you got all this going on. Hope you guys learned something. Let's get back to installing this setup, and we'll go from there.
right, you guys, so this here, all this over here is everything that comes with the Brett Dempsey Engineering crank trigger and cam sync kit. I'll walk you through everything as far as how this gets installed and as well as these. So we're gonna start with these and then we'll work on this. It's, there's a little bit more involved with this than um, you may think. So, one side is for race damper, the other side is for street damper. I was test fitting it earlier and it didn't quite want to sit very smoothly. I took some measurements and for some reason there's a gap. But it says to, to put it on there and then tighten it down and evenly. So we'll, we'll do that and then go from there. I, I can't I can't believe it. I took measurements and everything and I was like, this doesn't fit, but um oh my god, I just realized I forgot something. Shit. Looks like the crank pulley's coming back off because I'm a dumbass. Oh, pulling this back off. So let's pull this bolt out here and this 10 millimeter out here. That should come right out. There we go. Don't do what I did. And uh Forget your alternator bracket, because you kind of kind of need that on there. There we go. All right, so we're gonna install my alternator because the directions are installing this whole kit with the alternator on it. And I gotta put the alternator on eventually, anyways. So let's just do that right now. Also, there are two bolts that are a little bit longer than the other three. Don't get them mixed up. Very easy to do. So just pay attention to that later on. So you may notice I repositioned the crank so I can get this piece right underneath this. So that way when the sensor goes in there, it's parallel with the trigger tooth as well. Now we take our first Hall Effect sensor. Now, if you guys haven't seen Motion Raceworks video on these, when they actually took a couple of these and cut them in half, and there's a magnetic strip on the inside of these. It only runs about a one to two millimeter, maybe three millimeter span of the total diameter. So when you put it on, when you thread it in, sometimes that cross section that the magnet runs through, it doesn't line up directly over this, or you may need to turn this a quarter of a turn such that it'll actually pick up or get a good pickup on the trigger tooth here. I'm gonna go ahead and thread mine in and once I get it threaded in, I'll worry about the positioning of it. They say it needs to be anywhere between one to two and a half millimeters away from the trigger tooth. Now just kind of eyeballing it. I'm gonna say that's pretty close to about one millimeter or so. Yep, I'm gonna say that's spot on. That looks pretty good. Okay, so that's gonna do it for the Hall Effect sensor and crank trigger wheel. Um, that actually turned out to be a little bit more of a process than I thought. Um, for the record guys, don't forget this backing plate. Now moving on to bigger things. Well, smaller things rather. For starters, I gotta go get my factory cam angle sensor because that has the bracket on it that I need. Okay, so this is gonna go right on top of that. Take your 12. And ugga dugga them suckers down. So there's a dowel on here and that has to line up with that bad boy on there. Slide right in. Hey, there we go. 
like a glove. All right, since I can't read directions, so this part here has to actually be facing the left side of the car, not the left side of the motor. So not looking at it this way, it actually has to be facing the left side of the vehicle. So we're gonna spin the motor so it's facing that direction. So now we have more fun stuff. I actually think this is the best part here because this is the part you'll actually see up top. Now, obviously, same thing as the bottom. Dial this in. Let me turn these all the way out. So it's about one to two and a half millimeters. Tighten the one down. Doesn't need to be crazy tight. And the second one. Just spin the motor, make sure everything's good, kosher. Okay, so onto the wiring. Uh, I just had to spend a little bit of time to go over this myself to make sure I'm doing it right because obviously I'm not gonna install it and then get the car running. But as far as wiring goes, there's two separate harnesses for these cars, two separate cam angle sensors for these cars. So most of the wiring harness diagrams that you pull up online are for the early style 300 ZXs. The wire colors for those on the cam angle sensor are green, black, and green, yellow. So on the new style, it's black and then white, and then there's also a green yellow. So this is my uh, new style connector. And there's four wires here, one's power, one's ground. Now we are basically reworking these such that one is gonna be crank, one is gonna be cam. I have a white and a black wire. The black one is gonna be for the crank sensor on my ECU, cause I'm using the Haltech Platinum Pro. And the white one is going to be for the cam sensor. And that's how we're going to wire our connector on the new setup. So if you look over here, I've got a blank connector with no wires. And I've got the harness that comes with the sensor kit right here with pins all ready to go. Just double check everything. Uh, sometimes they can be a pain in the ass to de-pin. And with that, you run into the risk of possibly messing something up. So double check and do it right the first all time. Right. So I got my harness here. On the factory sensor, they sit just like this. Double checked, I've looked over it, and this is exactly how they sit. Oh wait, good thing I checked. I got my ground and power mixed up. This is why we double check. So, we're gonna do it like this then. Put them all in, make sure they're all the right. So we got ground, power, cam, crank. Give them all a good push. Make sure you hear them all click. And that's it, that's really it. Just double check yourself before you click them all in. So for me, it was very easy. I could literally just go off of this diagram right here. as one, two, three, four, crank, cam, power, ground. This is for Haltech Platinum Pro. Okay. So now we gotta figure out how we wanna route this. Uh, I gotta keep in mind, I am gonna install my water pump pulley here. It probably would be best to have that pulley on the motor. All right, guys, I think this is pretty much gonna do it for my crank trigger and cam sync setup on this motor. Uh, as you can see, I finally got the wiring ran. I got my eye hook over here. Now, in the instructions, it says to mount this hook over on the power steering pump bracket, but if you guys didn't catch it in the last video, I'm actually going to be running an electronic power steering pump in the back of the car, so I won't need my power steering pump mounted to the motor with a pulley and all that jazz. With that, I decided to run my wiring like this for now. It may eventually change once I get it into the car and see how everything fits. If need be, I'll zip tie it up here or something along those lines. Uh, we'll worry about that when we get there. But as of right now, I don't think this is gonna be a problem at all with the way it's ran or set up right now. Now there are other options for your cam trigger wheels. I believe Specialty Z makes one, but again, that is just the crank trigger setup. There's also Ross Performance, the reason I went with Brett Dempsey Engineering is because I already know someone with this exact same setup and he talked me into it. But anyways, I hope this helps a lot of you guys out. If you have an Elite 2500 and you're contemplating on doing this, it may be better to go with a 36-1. Now, honestly, I'm not familiar with the differences between the two. This is just what was available and what my ECU can run. If my ECU could run a 36-1 trigger wheel, I probably would have gone with that 
after doing a little bit of research between the two. For the next episode on this car, we are going to be installing my electric power steering pump. It's gonna be a Volvo electric hydraulic power steering pump that I am going to be mounting in the back bumper. Not in the front, not in the trunk, not in the front. I don't have a front, what am I saying? There's no room up there. So I gotta make a custom bracket. We're gonna make a custom reservoir that's gonna run actually into the trunk. Be completely different than most other setups that are out there right now as far as I'm aware anyways. So stay tuned, we'll get to it. I'm gonna start on that right now actually. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I actually learned a few things myself. You always learn something new doing this sort of stuff which I find enjoyable and I hope you guys did too. So if you appreciate this video and would like to see more, make sure you hit the subscribe button and we'll catch you all next time. Peace out.